Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna cover all of the features of Engine DJ 3.3. Now this release brings an update to Engine DJ Desktop, which is the library preparation side of Engine DJ. And it also brings an update to Engine DJ OS. That is the embedded side that is installed on your Denon DJ or Numark hardware running Engine DJ. First things first with this update, let's talk about Engine DJ profiles. What this is, is basically a single sign-on for Engine DJ users. So if you look here, I have a Prime 4 Plus. And if I were to go to log into, say, my Amazon account uh, on the device, it would look something like this. I would need to verify with a computer and type in the code and then connect my Amazon account with the device. Or if I did the same thing with Tidal, I would have to do a similar process, but on the, the Tidal side. But with Engine DJ profiles, I can just create a profile, choose which accounts I want to be logged into. And then when I log in again to my Engine DJ profile with the, the single sign on, everything will be logged in. So it looks something like this. I'll access the settings menu and you'll notice I'm in the profile tab. If I tap log in, I get this screen, connect, discover, play. Now a user can either just go to de device.engendj.com and enter the code to log in. But most use cases, uh, the DJs will just have their cell phone handy. And uh, I'm gonna just snap this QR code. And that's connecting to the device. And then now I'm logging into, uh, it's connected through the InMusic profile. And so I've successfully logged in. And then you can see on the screen that I'm logged in. And on the desktop, and I'll show some images of this. You can go to the Engine DJ website and you can select which streaming services you wanna be logged into. And how that will work is when you select that streaming service, you will connect with say your Amazon account and you'll log into that way and it'll connect it to your Engine DJ account. But you'll only have to do that one time and then once you're logged in, you're logged in. You can also update your profile picture and things like that. But really where this would be a great use case is a DJ that has multiple devices or DJs that are potentially multiple DJs DJing on the same device. They can log in and out of their profiles to access their streaming platforms. But now that I'm logged in, if I were to go to Amazon Music, it logs in right away. And that holds true with any of the other streaming services that are connected to the Engine DJ profile. You can also manage your connected devices on the Engine DJ website through your profile and also your device registrations, which is super handy. But one of the cool things too is when you're logged into the Engine DJ profile, let's look at Amazon Music, for example. Now, Amazon Music and Tidal typically are consumer first streaming platforms. They just happen to have a lot of music that DJs would need for a mobile gig or a wedding or something like that. So since they are consumer first, they don't have the BPM and key for most of their tracks. In fact, hardly any of them. Uh, I, I would say none of them until now. But when you're logged into the Engine DJ profile, if I were to look up, uh, let's just go to a, we'll just go to a top tracks, top songs. You'll notice that some of them have uh, BPM right here and key information. So if I were to load up uh, one of these songs, let's just let's do this Taylor Swift, why not? And see, the overview is already built, comes right in, it's got the beat grid already built. So that's already got the beat grids and everything built in because it had been scanned previously by an uh, Engine DJ profile user. Now at this stage, it's only the beta users that are scanning tracks, but once this is a public release, anybody that loads a track, so if I load this track here, for the first time on an Engine DJ device, it's gonna build the overview and it's gonna analyze the BPM and the key, and it's gonna save that to the, the cloud server. So next time somebody anywhere in the world on an Engine DJ device is logged into their profile, if they were to load this track that I just analyzed, they're gonna see the analyzed information from my loading, which is pretty cool. It's like a, a community library management effort, if you will. So now that that track has been scanned in, the key and BPM has been saved as well as the B grid. 
So at any point, if somebody were to look at Amazon Music on an Engine DJ device as they're logged into their profile, they get to share that information that I scan to the track, which is really cool. And on the Engine DJ website, when you log into your profile to manage your devices or your registrations, you'll see a little leaderboard, which is really cool, kind of gamifies the whole process so you can see who has provided and um, contributed the most scanned tracks. Uh, and that's their Engine DJ name, and it says who's at the top of the leaderboard. So it's a really cool communal DJ effort to uh, crowdsource this metadata scanning of Amazon Music title tracks that don't already have the BPM and key, which is really cool. Next, let's talk about Match. You can think of Match as a enhanced automatic filter for your library. Anytime you want to really drill down a specific criteria for your next song, if you're mixing a track, usually you would think about what would go into this in terms of BPM, how much of a range of BPM am I comfortable with for my next track to mix into, key, am I comfortable with fuzzy key mixing, do I need exact key mixing options, and am I really concerned about genre? So all these things, can be set up in Match. And so how Match would work in your library view, you see this little icon up at the top. Now, if I were to tap this, it's gonna filter based on my Match criteria that I already have set. I don't know what that is, I can't remember. So if I wanna reset that Match criteria, I tap that little button, and these are all of the Match rules I can set. If I'm comfortable with a little bit wider BPM range, I can bump that up to plus or minus 8%. If I'm comfortable with the fuzzy key, which is already set, I can leave it there or I can have an exact key match. I'll leave that one on. And it's already selected to follow the lead deck. So whatever is playing, when I tap that match button, it's gonna use the criteria of whatever the song is playing, that key and that BPM and that genre, to filter out my entire library if I'd like to see what's compatible. So we'll leave it at that. I'm more concerned about exact key than I am about the uh, plus or minus 8% as far as the BPM range. So I'll leave that there. Okay, so my match is on, I'm gonna click it off. So my lead deck is this Morgan Whalen song, and we've got 2A for the key, Camelot wheel, uh, 2A, 134 beats per minute. So if I were to hit my match, it's gonna basically match anything with exact key within eight beats per minute. So I probably don't have anything in this current uh, playlist but I can scroll through my playlist, or if I want, I can just tap my entire drive. Now I have a fully um, a fully compatible selection in my library based on that match criteria. So now I have all these options if I was concerned about being the exact key, but plus or minus eight BPM, there we are. And if I wanted to go back and adjust that criteria, I can totally do that with tapping here. And then if I'm okay with a little fuzzy key mixing, but I wanna kind of get a little closer in BPM, I can set it like that. And then my match uh, criteria for my library, the library selections that come back from the match, the results update in real time. Also with 3.3, we added fader echo, and that is exactly what you think it would be. That is a fader triggered echo effect, and that applies to either the up faders or the cross faders. Okay, now the options for Fader Echo are in a new tab called the FX tab. So if you go to your settings, there's a completely new tab you'll see called FX. And here you can adjust some of the sweep effects things like the filter resonance and um, other settings, but here are our Fader Echo settings. So I can set it to whatever beat division I want. I'll do half beat and you can set the feedback however you'd like it, I'll do 50%. Okay, and those are the settings. To enable Fader Echo, there are a couple ways we can do that. We can go to the main menu, the control center, and we can just select it here. So you can select it there, or most likely if you're in the performance view, there's a small icon up top, you can just select it there. And again, back in the settings of that, you can change the beat division. Or you can also set it to disarm after trigger by hitting this toggle here. 
Why would you want to do that? Well, if you're just somebody that wants to kind of mix in and out using your line faders, your channel faders, you can just know that when you cut that line fader at the mix out point, it's gonna echo out. And then when you bring it back up and do whatever, it's not gonna do it again until you load the next song and go through the process again. So I just did it one time. All right, and I'm gonna take that one off. It does also work with the crossfader. So let's just have some fun here. And load up a scratch track, put it over here. My BPM is pretty close, so we'll be good there. But I got my fader echo on, so it does work on the crossfader. And it only engages the echo after you cut off the crossfader. So if I just, nothing. Again, if I wanna adjust my uh, echo feedback, it's pretty high, let's dial it back 40%. All right, so also in 3.3, there's a phase meter that has been added and it's available on the top of the screen in the uh, track information section. What that does is it will allow you to visually see if your mixes are drifting in or out of phase. Now I'm gonna start mixing it in and uh, it's going to be uh, not perfect. And you'll see that the phase meter will adjust as I start shifting it. So I'll purposefully mix it in. Uh, at a tempo that's a little too fast. And so you'll see instantly that that phase meter is going to be out of alignment. Too fast, see it's, it's catching up and it's going past. So I gotta bring it back in phase. So now we're locked in. And when you're perfectly locked on, you'll see that the phase meter, we're drifting a hair, is perfectly lined up in the middle and it's green. And so it's just a visual cue to uh, keep, make sure your mixes aren't drifting out of alignment. Really quick to look at, easy to use. That is the phase meter. A couple of other really cool features added in 3.8. Two, we added this on-screen menu effect for most in a DJ hardware, but the Prime 4 and Prime 4 Plus weren't included in that. Now that is included. So if you turn the effects knob, you'll see this menu pop up. If you know what your effect is, you can tap it. Or if you wanted to, it will also affect it if you just want a long hold. So that's on-screen effect menu. A couple other things added. On the sweep effects, I'm sorry, on the touch effects side, we have an additional option for the flanger effect. Now the Y axis controls the level of the flanger. Also, in this update, there's a nice little addition added to the noise gate, so you have control over your noise volume in addition to the reverb. So if you just wanted to go super loud on your noise, then you adjust your reverb or both. That's a nice little effect added or adjustment to a current effect. And then also a nice addition. Inside of settings, you can select on your profile. If you go to your cues and loops, you can select your pause save loop behavior. So you can have it 
set to trigger now. So if I'm paused on this track on four, so I, I could start from a cue point by doing this and pressing play. But now if I go to the loops, I can have the setting so that it starts from a save loop point by just me pressing the save loop. And then the loops automatically engaged when I press that button. That pretty much sums up Engine DJ 3.3 for Engine DJ OS devices. There are some improvements and enhancements to Engine DJ desktop that will help with your library management. So there's some additional rules and criteria for your smart list, as well as Mac OS Sonoma support for Engine DJ desktop. But that in a nutshell is Engine DJ 3.3, a lot of great features for working DJs to improve their workflow. DJs can download that when available on enginedj.com or through Wi-Fi on their device with automatic prompt. 